Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a girl final longo back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course do not forget to subscribe. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. They suggested I react to the story of La Ilaha Ilala. I hope I said that right. So that's what I'm going to be reacting to today. And a big shout out to the um, people that have subscribed to our channel so far. Thank you for subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing, and everything that you guys do. I hope you guys are doing alright and may you stay blessed. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Hey, To mention a hadith whereby Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, he actually gives us a scenario where La ilaha illallah, when it is said genuinely and with full conviction, the result of that. Now, I want us to all imagine this scenario. It's Yom al Qiyamah. We are on a white, barren land. No trees, no sun, no moon, nothing. All flocking in one direction to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a daunting moment. You're going to receive your final judgment. Now, Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, he makes mention about a specific individual from this ummah. He comes from the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this man is presented in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah Azza wa Jal will command for their a'mal to come forward. Now subhanallah, 99 files Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam describes, 99 files. All 99 files which are as far as the eye can see are filled with sins and disobedience of this person. Now this person will look at these files and say, I'm done for. There is absolutely no hope. He's standing in front of Allah. You can't lie to Allah. You can't hide from Allah. You can't run away from Allah. So this person is saying, I'm done for. 99 files, my dear respected brothers, each file containing sins as far as the eye can see. But then you look at the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You look at the greatness of the one who you testify that there is nothing worthy of worship except for him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to this transgressing slave, He will say, Oh my slave, do you deny anything that you see? Did my angels who I have assigned to write your deeds, are they lying? Have they oppressed you? And your Lord does not oppress a single soul. He does not oppress anyone. So Allah is giving this person a benefit of the doubt. Do you deny anything that you see out of these 99 files? Do you see anything wrong? Anything over exaggerated? Have my angels written anything that they shouldn't have? So this man, he knows who Allah is. He knows that if he was to lie to Allah, he knows that his limbs will speak on his behalf and his mouth will be sealed. He knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows what the eye can see and what the eye cannot see and what is concealed in the heart of man. He knows who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. So his response is, he says, La Ya Rabb. Ya Rabb, everything that I see here is true. And he says that out of shame, he is embarrassed, he is mortified. Imagine standing in front of Allah. Malik al-Mulk. With 99 files worth of sins. And you say to Ya Rabb, yes Ya Allah. I was not oppressed, I transgressed. I made a mistake. I sinned. Yani despite this person saying, yes Ya Allah, everything here is truth. Everything here I have done. Not a single good deed is in that file. And yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He asks him, He says, do you have an excuse why you committed these sins? 
Do you see the greatness of Allah, my dear respected brothers? Do you see the fact that Allah does not want to punish you? Do you see why I tell you, my brothers, when you say La ilaha illallah, say it from your heart because really there is nothing worth worshipping except Allah. There is no one more merciful except Allah. There is no one more loving than Allah, even your own mother. So this is why I tell you, La ilaha illallah, you should say it from your heart. He says, Ya Abdi, do you have an excuse for why you committed all these atrocities, all these sins? He says, No, Ya Allah. No, Ya Allah. He doesn't blame Shaytan. He blames himself. He says, Ya Allah, it was my own wrongdoing. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says to the angels, He says, This slave has with us for him a card. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says to the angels, He says, We have a card for you with us. So the man, he says, Ya Rabb, what does this one card have in comparison to these 99 files in each file, Allahu Akbar? What do they have in comparison to that? A little card in comparison to 99 files as far as the eye can see. So then Allah Azza wa Jal will command the angels to place the 99 files on one side of the scale and for the card to be placed on the other side of the scale and the scales will fall in favor of that card. What is that card? This card is the fact that this man said La ilaha illallah once in his life, but he meant it. So Allah forgave all 99 files. The power of La ilaha illallah. Just because he said it and he meant it and he understood it and he knew who Allah was, Allah forgave that 99 files. Now I'm not saying for each and every one of us to go out and commit as much sins as possible. And then to say, La ilaha illallah, because I'll tell you why. You don't know if you say it and you actually mean it. You don't even know if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept it from you. But if you understand who Allah is and you say it from your heart, believe me, ikhwani, you will reap the rewards of La ilaha illallah in the dunya before you reap it in the akhirah. Subhanallah, whenever anyone says, La ilaha illallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He responds. He speaks to the angels. The hadith says, the one who says, there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah is the greatest, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, my slave has spoken the truth. There is no God except for me. There is no deity worthy of worship except for me, and I am the greatest. The one who says, there is no God except Allah and there is no association of partnership with Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He responds, that my slave has spoken the truth. There is only I who is worthy to be worshipped and there are no associated partners with me. The one who says that there is no God except Allah and for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the glory and the bounties Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, my slave has spoken the truth. There is no God except for me. And for me is the glory and for me is the bounties. Subhanallah. Imagine Allah Azza wa Jal acknowledging your statement, is aware of your testimony. Now, why is that of importance? Why do we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be aware of our testimony, our statement of La ilaha illallah? Yaqulun Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, if a person is sick and through his sickness he says La ilaha illallah and he dies from this illness, Jahannam will be made haram on him. That is how great La ilaha illallah is. Jahannam will be made forbidden to touch this person's skin. Qala Nabi alayhi salatu was salam that the one who says la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, this statement is so generous to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, kareematun ala Allah, it's generous to Allah. Thatu makan, it is of a high stature, a high status to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That the one who says it and says it out of conviction and his meaning, understands its meaning 
and incorporates it. For this person is Jannatul Firdaus awaiting him in the Akhirah. And as for the one who says it, and he's not, does not say out of conviction, but he says it out of fear. For them, he says, it conceals their blood, it makes their blood sacred and holy, and it protects their wealth. And if they are to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will hold them accountable for their intention. Yani even if you say, La ilaha illallah, with meaning or without meaning, you're still benefiting. Because this statement is so great to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is so big to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the only reason why Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, he mentioned the other part of that hadith is to show you the greatness of this statement. Subhanallah, ikhwani, the reason why we enter Jannah is because we testify that there is no God except Allah. Your testification, La ilaha illallah, when you say La ilaha illallah, you are acknowledging that you've put all your faith, all your hopes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that the only one that can protect you and that can actually help you is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do we take advantage of this statement that we have in our lives? Or do we just say it for the sake of saying it? Do we understand the rewards that lie behind La ilaha illallah, behind this kalima? And I advise every single one of us to research and to ask, why is it so great? What I have mentioned today is just the surface level of the bounties of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam mentioning about la ilaha illallah. There are still subhanallah oceans. And that when we say la ilaha illallah to actually mean it from our hearts, that we can reap the rewards in the dunya and in the akhirah of kalimat la ilaha illallah. I will end with something, ikhwani. La ilaha illallah, this word la ilaha illallah is what basically allows you admission into Jannah. Because you're testifying, as I said, that there is no God except Allah. Now imagine this scenario, right? You're in Jannah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask the dwellers of Jannah. He will say, my slaves, is there anything else I can provide for you? So they say, Ya Rabb, what more can you provide us? You've saved us from Jahannam and have you admitted us into Jannah. What more can you do for us? This is amazing. So he says, my slaves, I'll give you an extra. Today I will be pleased with you and I'll never be displeased with you again. And at that moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will lift the barrier between us and him. And Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, he says, you will see Allah as you see the moon. You will gaze into the face of Allah as you gaze into the moon. And subhanallah, all the hardship that you went through in this dunya will be forgotten. Subhanallah. But that's for the people who say La ilaha illallah and truly mean it and truly look forward to that meeting with Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So ikhwani, what is the take home message from today's khutbah? Islam is undoubtedly, undoubtedly the greatest blessing Allah has blessed us. And from this blessing, He gave us the honor and a greater blessing to be able to testify that there is no God except Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is His messenger. The gate, the, the keys to Jannah. So what I would like from every one of us, including myself, is to take it upon ourselves to do some research and to understand what is La ilaha illallah and why is it so great? What does it mean? And actually go into depth and understand who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Believe me, my brothers, wallahi, when you understand who Allah is, you will fall in love with Allah. There is nothing more beloved to you than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
I have a lot of questions. I'm just here think to, thinking to myself, could these words really be uh, the key to entering um, heaven? Because imagine you've lived your entire life doing the worst of things and then one thing happens to you and you're like, um, God is the greatest or there's no other God other than Allah. So then does it mean that that person will go to heaven? Or in situations where you're young and you actually acknowledge there's no other God other than uh, God himself or Allah himself. But then live the rest of your life doing bad things or not even thinking about God like that anymore. But in those times, in these both situations that I've given, when the person said these words, they really meant them. Does it mean they'll still be given the chance to go, um, enter heaven? Um, yeah, otherwise I don't have much contribution. I just want uh, someone to assist me with the answers to the questions that I've asked and I'll appreciate. Let me know what you guys actually think about whatever was said in this video and about my questions. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next reaction video.